Let's enjoy Nashville, Tennessee. I'm riding, 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 riding with my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Hey everybody, we're staying here at the Nashville KOA and now we are going to take an Uber to downtown. Here we are by the corner of 2nd Avenue and Broadway and uh, this street, uh, Broadway, is where all the honky-tonk bars are, where the action is, you know, the touristy area, if you will. It begins here uh, by the Cumberland River and it goes uh, west uh, for a few blocks. Tomorrow during the day perhaps we'll explore the riverfront a little more, but right now we are kind of hungry, so we're gonna grab a beer and get something to eat. It is the Sunday before Memorial Day and everything is super crowded. You're just gonna walk around for a little bit, you know, get a feel for the area. Every single bar has live music and I love that. And check out the Honky Tonk Central on the other side of the street. That place is packed. By the way, Nashville is also a popular destination for bachelorette parties. And uh, the Pedal Tavern, that contraption, seems to be a very popular group activity, as you can see. Man, this place is crazy busy. That's the AT&T building, which is colloquially known as the Batman building, and you can see the resemblance. And there it is again. We're actually walking towards this street called uh, the Printer's Alley, which is supposed to have all these bars, but to be honest, this is a little bit of a disappointment. I guess I had uh, high expectations, but uh, this is it. Originally, it was the site of two large newspapers, hence the name, but it probably became famous during the early 20th century because the establishments sold liquor illegally. What a concept. Well, liquor sales in restaurants here in Nashville were actually not legal until 1968. Can you believe that? We finally decided to go into a bar. And they have this uh, Red Hook Longhammer IPA on special, which is uh, quite nice, actually. We are actually more hungry than thirsty at this point, uh, but none of these bars uh, serve food. I just found out. <laughs> I do enjoy the music quite a bit, actually. Nothing like a live band playing the blues. And I also get a kick out of all the people dancing. Very cool. Alright, let me get a second beer since we're not driving anyways. I do apologize in advance for some of the low quality of the video. I didn't really know how crazy it was going to get, so all I brought for camera was my phone. Actually, it's not so bad for being the phone. The two beers on an empty stomach are hitting us pretty hard, as expected. So we go to the only place we found that served food at this time, Margaritaville of all places. And while the food and drinks are obviously not a Nashville thing, the band is legit. At some point they begrudgingly perhaps play the Jimmy Buffett classic that gives this establishment its name. Uh, we're tired and a little drunk, so time to go home. And we're going to Nashville KOA.
It is morning in Nashville. Let's explore. There's the Bridgestone Arena and the Music Center to the right, the Country Music Hall of Fame to the left, which we'll visit later. Walking along the Walk of Fame Park, we cross the street and here's this fountain uh, representing the birth of Apollo, right next to the Shermerhorn Symphony Center, home of the Nashville Symphony. The building was completed in 2006, its neoclassical design, inspired by some of the world's great concert halls. We walk on the pedestrian bridge uh, to see this view of downtown and the Nissan Stadium on the other side of the Cumberland River, which is home of the Tennessee Titans. walk towards Broadway. And Broadway looks very different from last night. It is slowly waking up. Actually, all the tourists are still asleep. We see this guy pressure cleaning the street from last night. A wild party, perhaps. Uh, I'm sure from last night. We walk by Printer's Alley once again on our way to Capitol Hill. This right here is the downtown Presbyterian Church, which has been designated a National Historic Landmark. And this right here is a statue of the legendary Chet Atkins, with an empty stool next to him. Man, I wish I would have brought my guitar. As we approach Capitol Hill, here we see the War Memorial. This building in front of us is the Tennessee State Capitol. As we see it here from the Legislative Plaza, which is really the side of the building, not the front. The Greek Doric building is the War Memorial. And today being Memorial Day, it seems very appropriate for us to be here and honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice. The statue in the middle of the courtyard symbolizes victory. And there are also two smaller memorials on the south end of the plaza. This one, as you can tell by the map, is dedicated to the Korean War. And this right here, that's uh, the Vietnam War Memorial. Alright, let's continue. You know what? I really, really like Nashville so far. Let's walk towards Broadway uh, once again, and it looks like they are going to have a Memorial Day concert. We haven't had breakfast yet, so we want to find something to eat. Here's this famous honky-tonk called the Tootsies, which is right next to the historic Ryman Auditorium. The Ryman Auditorium is a historic landmark which dates back to 1892 and is often called the Mother's Church of Country Music. Okay, let's go here into the Legends Corner and let's do something radical, like having a beer before noon, heck, before breakfast. And it turns out this is actually the highlight of the trip so far. Here we are, in the Music City, listening to some beautiful country music, drinking before noon at this fantastic place, just the way I like it, not too crowded. The walls are covered with records, and the lady, she also plays the violin, but I only captured it in this live video I posted on Facebook, hence the lower quality, I apologize. Follow me on Facebook for more live videos like this one. Next 
next we go into the Country Music Hall of Fame. And the musician playing is no other than the guitar virtuoso David Anderson. And he has been a permanent fixture here for the better part of the decade. It is here that we finally get something to eat, of all places. And then, well, we tour the museum. The first section is dedicated to the Bachmann Gretsch guitar exhibit, with over 70 guitars, illustrating the evolution of the instrument. And I'm sorry about the slideshow here, but they wouldn't allow video recording inside the museum, and I decided to follow the rules this time. This 1962 Pontiac Bonneville belonged to the famous honky-tonker Webb Pierce. And here's Elvis Presley's solid gold Cadillac, with 24 karat gold plated trimmings, a gold plated TV, record player, ice maker, and even a phone. And here's Elvis's gold piano. Here's a recreation of Owen Bradley's office. And, uh, you know, this is what would have been my dream recording studio back in the early 90s. Uh, this circle is the actual Hall of Fame, and if you stand in the center, the acoustics are so good that you can hear your own voice reflected right. back. Yes, I can hear myself laughing. Wow. Next, we take a bus tour to the famous RCA Studio B. By the way, this tour is only offered at several times uh, during the day, so do make a reservation. Our guide is a virtual encyclopedia. His narration full of anecdotes. And that created that reverb or that echo effect. If you will, please try to make your way in as quickly as you can. Just follow me right in the front door. We'll resume the tour once everybody's inside. Here's our guide uh, next to this poster with all of Elvis's hits recorded here. You know I am a sucker for vintage audio equipment, so I, I am in heaven here, ogling all these old recorders and mixers. It is so cool. That's the turntable Elvis used to listen to demos, until one day he got pissed and kicked it. We step into the actual recording room. The different color lights uh, were there to set the mood, uh, depending on the song. Actually, Elvis's hit Are You Lonesome Tonight was recorded in complete darkness. And here I get a chance to sit at Elvis's favorite grand piano. And we are right in the heart of Music Rail. Music, this is a publishing company, Carnival Music. The gentleman who owns it, Frank Liddell, works out of there every day. Very famous producer. Toby Keys recorded there. Shania Twain from Canada. Kenny Chesney, the group Alabama, recorded almost everything they did there. This is built as the Capitol Records building. It's now Word Entertainment. Studio A, still very much active, right next door to Studio B. Reba McIntyre Starstruck Studios is on your left. And of course, Reba McIntyre records here today. I so mentioned Mike Kerb owning Studio B. He founded Kerb Records. We're now turning on to 16th Avenue, Music Square East. As we make the turn, if you look out to the right, you're going to see a red brick building coming up. And inside the red brick building is where the Kwanzaa Hut recording studio was located. That's where Patsy Cline recorded. That's where Bob Dylan recorded his albums. And that is the building where Chris Christopherson was a janitor when he first worked on Music Row. Warner Brother Records is coming up on your right, and actually also on your left. And then also on your left, right after that, is going to be Spence Manor Suites, where Elvis Presley stayed. Okay, we're back at the Hall of Fame, and uh, let's take another Uber. Let's uh, explore the city a little more. And there's another one of those uh, party bike contraptions. <laughs> Pretty cool. And that right there is a famous Nashville hot chicken place. And take a look at the line. Here we are at Centennial Park, where they have this uh, replica of the Parthenon. It was built in 1897 for the Centennial Exposition. Inside, uh, there is a 42-foot statue of the goddess Athena, like in the original Parthenon, but we don't really feel like paying to go inside. Besides, our time here in Nashville, unfortunately, is coming to an end. It is the Music City, alright? 
Music everywhere, even here. It is such a beautiful day, and it is such a shame we have to leave so soon. Back at the KOA, most people have left, and soon, so will we. Anyway, we have left so many things unseen in this great city that we must come back sometime soon. Okay, next time we come, we have to spend more time, definitely. This is really just an overview and to be honest, I never intended my stay here to be anything more than that, an overview. Next time, uh, I'll have to try that hot chicken, go into the Ryman Auditorium and the Symphony Center for sure, and just walk around the city more. Explore the local life and not just uh, the touristy Broadway. Stumble upon the controversial Musica sculpture. Controversial, you know why? Because it depicts naked people, really. You know what? I really, really liked Nashville. Even though we paid for two nights here at the KOA, it was the minimum on this uh, long weekend, it was always my intention to stay only one night. But with the extra night, we had the option to leave later than the regular checkout time, which is very convenient. Tonight we are actually staying in Kentucky, at the Mammoth Cave National Park. But I am going to show you Kentucky on the next video, in which we are going to visit Mammoth Cave, sample some bourbon, and hang out with my cousin Juan and the rest of the family in Louisville. See you then! Well, that's all folks, uh, do remember to subscribe if you haven't, and if you liked it, uh, well, give me a thumbs up and share with your friends and comment below. I am also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and even Snapchat, so follow me there too if you will. I am now Traveling Robert in all of the social networks, and you can also visit the blog at TravelingRobert.com, join the mailing list. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. I'm riding. Riding with my RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my